Welcome to this month's CostX Coffee Break webinar. In this video, we'll be discussing how to add user-defined properties to the BIM model. My name is Ashley Corona, and I'm a product specialist with Exactl. If you're unfamiliar with CostX, it's a digital estimating software with universal application, ranging from hand-drawn sketches, PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD files, and BIM models. These all incorporate on-screen measurement, live linked workbooks, revisioning capabilities, and BIM data extraction. In last month's webinar, Jonathan discussed workbook live links. He mentioned that all live links within a workbook are denoted by a green text. There are four types of live links, namely dimension groups, which are measurements feeding into our workbooks, rates, which are rates coming from the rate library into our workbook, constants, which are coming from the constants library into the workbook, and workbook values. He also touched on how he used the auto drop function to create these live links. If you'd like to view this webinar, please go to www.exactl.com slash webinars. I'd like to preface this video with giving a little bit of an introduction. We're going to talk about the I in BIM, which is the information in building information modeling. In their earliest stages of design, Models may not have a lot of information that's necessary for pricing. At this stage, the designers may be more concerned with setting up the layout for the project. Another problem with having too much information too early in the design is that it clutters the model and makes it undrivable. This will also result in an excessively large file, which will make it harder for other users downstream to manage the model. In this month's webinar, we're going to be discussing adding user-defined properties to a BIM model to supplement the information that the designer has given us. Namely, we're going to be analyzing the model for any missing information which may need to be included in the estimate. We're also going to be analyzing the schedule for opportunities to add this information. We're going to do so by adding attributes to the schedule. After that, we'll use a model map to extract the quantities from the model and use our rate database to price out these newly found quantities. We'll begin first by taking a look at the 2D sheets and getting a feel for what the design intent is. This is important because once we have an understanding of what activities are going to be happening in each of the different rooms, then we'll be able to make safe assumptions about what kind of finishes are going to be applied. It looks like this is a multi-purpose building. Just from flipping through the first, second, and third floor plans, I could see that there are some conference rooms, some instruction rooms, as well as some administration areas. At this stage, it would be safe to make some assumptions on what kind of flooring is going to go in each of these different rooms based on the room names. The cafeteria and computer labs would probably have vinyl floor tile, while the conference rooms and teachers' offices would probably have carpet. At this time, I'm going to jump over to my model tab to look for any relevant flooring information. I do have a floor node, so I'm going to open that up and see if the designer gave me any indication about what kind of flooring finishes are going to go in this building. And it looks like it's all miscellaneous information that's not going to be helpful for pricing. This rooms node looks like it would be my best bet for generating this finish information. As you could see, when I expand the node, I can see all of the different rooms that are in this building. And if I open up the schedule and the designer gave me the areas and the perimeters for each of these different rooms, then I could take the functionality approach when it comes to doing my takeoff. It looks like the designer did give me a square foot area for each of the different rooms. And if I scroll over to the right, it looks like they also gave a perimeter for each of the different rooms and I can use this to come up with my flooring and base takeoff. Given the information that I have in this model, the best approach would be to export this entire schedule into Excel, add some additional properties, and then import it back into Costex. From there I can run a model map and if I assign some master format codes early on in the process then I can use these codes to really easily generate an estimate for my flooring. So the next step is to right click on my schedule and save it to Excel. I'm going to navigate somewhere on my desktop and save my Excel spreadsheet so I can make these changes. I'm going to save my file as RAC model 1 and click save and it should open automatically in Excel. 
At this point, I'm going to do some light housekeeping and expand all my columns so I can read all the information within the cells. The very first column I'm going to add is flooring. I'm also going to add a column for flooring master format code so I can add in the associated codes with each of the different flooring types. Similarly, I'll add the column for skirting and for skirting master format codes. This is the part of the estimating process where I, as the estimator, need to make some assumptions about what kind of flooring is going to go in each of these different types of rooms. As I explained earlier in the video, I'm going to use a functionality approach to make my assumptions about what kind of flooring is going to go in each of these different rooms based on their function. The first step is to copy and paste the room names into the flooring column. From here, I'll take advantage of Excel's filter option to filter all of the different rooms by their function. The first type of flooring I'm going to assign is tile. So I'm going to filter all of the rooms that would have tile. In this case, the men's room, the women's restroom, the toilet room, and the vestibule would be tiled rooms. So I'm going to select those and then click OK. Now that I've isolated the rooms that are tiled, I'm ready to replace the room names with the word tile. The next step is to insert the master format codes for the tile. I'll switch back into Costex so I can pick these codes up from my rate library. Once I'm back in my costing view within Costex, I can search through the rate libraries that I have available. I want to use my GC database, so I'm going to click that one. Once I'm inside that rate database, I can search for all of the materials that I'm looking for. Each of these master format codes have cost rates associated with them. So if I use these codes, then I can generate my new estimate fairly quickly. Now that I found one of the codes that I need, I'll generate a new workbook. This workbook is just going to be a placeholder. So I can drag and drop all of the unit rates that I need from my rate database for the different materials that are in my project. I'll follow these same steps for the ceramic wall tile, search for that description in my database, and then drag and drop the line item that I want. Now that I have the code for ceramic tile, I'll search for rubber base and drag and drop that code into my workbook as well. I'll do the same for the terrazzo. And the same for the vinyl flooring. The last two items I need are the sealed concrete and the carpet. Once I have those two, I'm ready to jump back into my Excel spreadsheet and start adding these codes and descriptions. The very first code I'm going to copy is for the tile, so I'll right click, copy, and then paste it into Excel. Restrooms typically don't have any rubber wall skirting in them. They typically have full height or half height ceramic wall tile instead. For this case, I'm going to drag and drop the master format code for ceramic wall tile and once I'm in the costing view, once I've generated my workbook, I can assign a height to this ceramic wall tile and that'll generate a wall area. I'll then add the description wall tile into the skirting column. In the same manner that I filled out the tile, I'm going to go through the entire schedule and populate all of the different fields with the appropriate flooring and master format codes. I'll also add in the master format codes for the rubber skirting and the description as well. I'm now going to use the filter function to isolate all the rooms that are carpeted so I can add in the master format codes for carpet and the description. I'll assume that the carpeted rooms are going to receive rubber wall skirting, so I'll add that description and the master format code that's associated with it.
You'll notice when I remove the filter that the schedule is more populated as I'm adding all these additional attributes. Next, I'm going to use the filter tool to isolate all the rooms which have vinyl sheet flooring so I can add that description and the code. I'll do the same for the terrazzo. To finish up my newly created finished schedule, I'll add polished concrete to all the rooms where it's applicable along with rubber wall skirting and the codes. Now that I've completed adding all my flooring finishes to my rooms, I can close that filter and review my schedule and make sure that it lines up with my assumptions. If everything looks good, then I'll save and close. Now that I've made all my changes to my schedule, I'm ready to re-import it back into Costex. I'm going to do so by navigating to my Properties button in the Home tab. From there, I'll go to Property File Name. I'll open those ellipses and then navigate to where I have my Excel spreadsheet saved within my desktop. Once I have it open, I can click Update. If I open up my schedule, you'll notice that my newly added attributes are now included and highlighted in yellow. At this point, I'm ready to create my new model maps. I'll do so by clicking into Model Map. You'll notice I have two different tabs, Global and Project. Global is where all my model maps go. The Project tab is where I could add any project-specific model map, so I'll insert my new model maps in the Project tab. I will name my model map Flooring Model Map and Today's Date, and then click OK. Now that I have my model map open, I can start populating all the fields that apply. I'll start by calling this folder 096500 flooring. I'll then jump into my dimension group name, drag and drop the flooring master format codes in there. That way when I generate my workbook, I can use this field to come up with my rates. The measurement type and default display will be area since they are floor areas. I'll then scroll down and drag and drop the areas attribute into the areas field and preview. That looks perfect, so I'm going to close out of that. I'll follow all of the same steps and generate a new model map for the rubber wall skirting. I'm now going to populate all the fields that apply. The folder I'm going to call 096600 rubber wall skirting. For the dimension group, I'll drag and drop the master format code for the rubber wall skirting in there. The measurement type and default display will both be length since they are linear units of measure. The very last step is to map the perimeter attribute into the length field. I can then preview my model map and then close. Now that I've created my model maps, I'm ready to import my dimensions using my model maps. I'll do so by clicking on Import Dimension using Model Map. 
and I'll select the model maps that I just created and then run that map. Once I complete the flooring import, I'll go back and import using the model map for the rubber base. Now that I have all my quantities, I'm ready to jump back into the costing view and generate a new workbook from my codes. I'll start by naming this workbook Master Format Flooring Estimate. I'll select the database where I got my Master Format codes from and that is the GC database in this case, so I'll select that one. I want my description to come from the rate description, so I'll choose that option and then click OK. Costex is showing me some warnings. The very first warning is for the carpet. It has detected that there's a difference in the units of measure. The rate in my rate database gives me dollars per square yard of carpet, while the model map generated square feet of carpet. The second message it's showing me is for the ceramic wall tile. That's because so far I just have a length and I don't have a height assigned to that length to generate a wall area. First, I'll address the error for the carpet. That can be very easily fixed by simply dividing the total square foot area by nine to generate a square yard area. Since I used the rubber wall skirting model map to generate my quantities for length of perimeter in the restrooms, as it stands, Right now, my ceramic wall tile is in the same drill down with the rubber skirting, but it doesn't quite belong there. So before I make these changes, I'm just gonna cut it and paste it into my flooring estimate. That way I have my estimate organized by trade. And then from there, I can assign a height to come up with a wall area. From here, I'll delete the quantity in the quantity cell and then drill down into that quantity buildup and then drag and drop my ceramic wall tile quantity and then assign a wall height. Now that I've finished my flooring estimate, I'm ready to generate a new report. Since I do have all my master format codes, I'll choose a master format report. I'll choose the master format report of my choice and then generate and preview my report. I've now generated this CSI master format report, which shows all the information that was in my workbook. I have my master format codes along with the descriptions and the total value for the flooring, which was previously not shown in the 2D sheets or the 3D model. To conclude this video, I hope you enjoyed learning about how you can add your own user-defined properties to a BIM model in order to come up with a more complete and comprehensive estimate, no matter what level of design. Thank you for watching this month's webinar. If you'd like to see other videos like this, please go to www.exactl.com webinars.